chapter 7 from Doreen Virtue's Little Earth Angels book. It's one of my favourite little chapters I've ever read in any book. The Wise Ones, reincarnated sorceresses, high priestesses, sorcerers, wizards, shamans and witches. Intense, exotic, eccentric, the wise ones glow from the inside. They look like romance novel characters, usually with long, silky hair, oval faces and haunting eyes, complete with a lifetime of shadows beneath them. Earth angels from this realm possess profound wisdom and are highly intuitive. Their eyes are penetrating and there's no point in pretending or lying to wise ones because truth is apparent to them. Eccentric and flamboyant, Wise ones love to dress in flowing garments reminiscent of romantic eras in the past. There's a certain element of mystery accompanying each member of this realm. It's obvious when first meeting the gaze of the wise ones that they know. The wise ones are humans with past lives in which they learned how to channel their power into miraculous healings and manifestations, including the ability to affect the weather and material objects through levitation and telekinesis and so on. These are the extremely powerful and well-trained magicians of the human race who were called out of retirement from the spirit world in order to come back to Earth for the currently urgent situation on our planet. Their energy is darker and heavier than the other Earth Angel realms. Wise ones have a somber, serious, almost depressed energy, and they're sometimes quite stern. In relationships, they're highly opinionated, but in a helpful way. They're the stage mums and directors of their friends and family members, always knowing the best route for others to take. If someone wants solid advice, they should ask a wise one, whereas the other realms are new to being human, or have past lives where they were incarnated angels, elementals, and so on. The wise ones have been human for eons. Like the other earth angels, they feel different. In fact, some wise ones proclaim, I am different and proud of it. As one incarnated sorcerer put it, in childhood, I realized I was different and didn't fit in, and that created difficulty, until I finally realized that my uniqueness was a benefit. I wasn't part of the mass or the norm, and when I matured, I realized that this was positive. For that reason, the wise ones are more comfortable with earth life than those in other realms. They're realistic, compassionate, and patient with people, and they've learned to enjoy their time here. Incarnated sorceress Linda spoke for many wise ones when she said, I know I'm different from other people, but I don't really feel like an outsider because I basically don't care if most people like me or not. This detachment from other people's opinions is a hallmark of the wise ones. The common denominator of wise ones is the number of years they've logged learning to harness their magical powers. Some develop their own interest in metaphysics, me, and others were handpicked as children and schooled in the psychic arts. The wise ones have lived as high priests and priestesses in Atlantis, ancient Greece and Egypt, during Arthurian times, among the Mayans, as the Essenes, and as native medicine men and women. They've witnessed civilizations destroyed and people murdered for their spiritual beliefs. The wise ones know and appreciate the innate darkness within the human ego, but they have an even greater appreciation and respect for the heights to which humans are capable, and this is what they've come back to teach. On the other side, many wise ones were comfortably enjoying the afterlife plane. They'd created paradise-like communities in the spirit world, complete with castles, gardens and waterfalls. Everything seemed wonderful. But then, the wise ones were approached by a committee of guides that was trying to enlist retired spiritual soldiers back into service. They asked the wise ones to return to Earth to teach and model peacefulness, and to remind people how to use their inner power and strength to create harmony. Some wise ones reluctantly agreed to return to Earth. When they got here, they felt the heavy density of the shifting energy. A few wise ones, unable to handle this climate, exited immediately by willing their own deaths. Other wise ones relegated themselves to an earth life that felt depressed or angry about it. The best adjusted wise ones were those who resumed the study of earth-based spirituality, 
such as astrology, wicca, cabalistic magic, paganism, rituals, crystal healing, herbology, candle invocations, shamanism and so forth. Grethel says one of the reasons why she believes she is a reincarnated sorceress is because of my early interest in chants, herbs, magic wands, the apparatus of ritual, candles, incense, water and so on. I also had an imaginary friend as a child who was a wizard. If that weren't enough, my great aunt called me a sorceress when I was young. Members of the Wise Ones realms have spent lifetimes developing their spiritual and magical gifts. They're well practiced in the spiritual arts of manifestation, alchemy and healing. They're born as psychic children who may view their gifts as being curses, especially if they're prescient about a forthcoming neg negative situation. The children may blame themselves for not diverting a tragedy since they foresaw it. Yet, these psychic insights are often an opportunity for the individuals to pray about it. If they were supposed to intervene, they would have been clearly told what to do to prevent the situation. The majority of wise ones whom I interviewed had vivid memories of past lives where they were witches, wizards, priests and the like. Most of the wise ones surveyed had strong emotional reactions to the era of the witch burnings from the years 1300 to 1700. Many of them have full or fragmented memories of being burned, hung or otherwise killed for their spiritual differences. Sarah, for example, says, I have memories of being burned at the stake while people screamed and cursed at me. I remember being viciously tortured. The witch burning craze consisted of a mass superstition that anything bad, whether spoiled crops or sick children, was caused by a witch's spells. It was decided that the only way to purge this evil was through the burning of the witch's blood. Many of the witches were hunted by their neighbours, local governments and churches. In more humane situations, they were killed before being tied to a pole and set on fire. Yet, in France, Germany and Switzerland, most witches were burned alive. Even those who weren't actually killed have conscious memories of this time period. They remember being afraid of the Inquisition, the Knights Templar, the Cathar Trials. They were hung in England. They were hung. They were hung in England, Noah says. Um, the Cathars were a pagan group in 13th century Europe who were targeted by Pope Innocent III and were hunted and put to death and the other various ways in which the witch hunts manifested. The threat of death hung over everyone during those times, and the memory makes wise ones nervous about fully reopening their spiritual gifts. As a result, many wise ones hold back from unleashing their power because of these ancient memories. Yet, the reason why they've elected to be here at this time is to teach and to use those spiritual tools. A wise one's purpose involves dusting off their psychic and spiritual healing abilities, and since we can only feel happy and fulfilled if we're engaged in our purpose, then it's necessary for the wise ones to open up and redevelop their spiritual gifts. The wise ones have a special affinity with the elemental kingdom, and vice versa. Not only do fairies and elves play a role in earth-based spiritual practices, but deep friendships were forged between the elementals and the wise ones. In ancient times, people recognised the benefits of working with the elemental kingdom, yet the churches felt threatened by this power outside of their walls. So, a negative public relations campaign against fairies, elves and other elementals was waged. To this day, many people are afraid of the beautiful elementals. Because the elementals were so tied in with the wise ones in ancient and modern times, some incarnated elementals may believe that they're actually from the wise ones realm. That's due to the shared experiences and memories of these two realms. So, a female incarnated elemental may remember the witch burnings, not because she was burned, but because she witnessed her wise ones friends being burned. She may be confused and think that these are her memories of being burned. Yet the differences between the two realms are clear. Wise ones are more solemn, dark and serious than the playful, mischievous incarnated elementals. Wise ones have long oval faces and prefer to wear their hair long too, even if they currently have it cut short for business reasons. 
while incarnated elementals have, found, have round faces and often wear their hair short, except in the case of incarnated fairies and mermaids, male, male wise ones often wear their hair in ponytails or comb back with gel. Actors Della Reese, Angelica Houston, Jack Nicholson and Jimmy Smits are examples of the looks and intensity of the wise ones realms. The wise ones may dress eccentrically or romantically, reflecting their favourite past life period. Female wise ones prefer long flowy goddess gowns in dark colours with chunky crystal necklaces. Male wise ones favour woven shirts in natural fabrics or renaissance style shirts. The men may wear spiritually significant pendants spiritually significant pendant necklaces such as Celtic crosses or Ong insignias. Wise ones often love to attend renaissance fairs in full costume where they can relive the highs and lows of their past lives. The wise ones have dragons, wizards and goddesses as spirit guides. They're very interested in the study of ancient eras that may be regarded as mythical such as Avalon, Atlantis and Lemuria. They collect wizard statues and love books and movies dealing with magical themes such as the Lord of the Rings series, the Harry Potter books and anything related to Arthurian times. Many wise ones are also history buffs of Noah. As incarnated High Priestess Marley wrote, I love Greek and Egyptian mythology. I can easily relate to Isis in the Egyptian tradition and I love Pallas Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war. I deeply love her stories and her support she gave to Ulysses. With great passion, I studied ancient Greek and I relate to all the goddesses of Olympus. Wise ones are also highly sensitive to moon phases, physically and emotionally affected by the full and new moon cycles. They often engage in full moon ceremonies and celebrate the equinoxes. No clear-cut astrological pattern was apparent among the wise ones interviewed for this book. Interestingly though, every wise one surveyed knew their sun, moon, rising and ascending astro astrological signs. This was in sharp contrast to members surveyed from the other realms who didn't even know their sun sign and rarely knew their moon sign. Clearly the wise ones are knowledgeable about astrology and appreciative of its applications. A high percentage of the wise ones surveyed had a past or current history of heart and cardiovascular health problems. Uh, mitral valve prolapse, high blood pressure, tachycardia, arrhythmia, heart murmurs and heart attacks were rampant among this realm. Could this be from the heartache within the realm for loving earth and her people so much and watching her potential destruction? Or is it residual pain from the witch hunts where the wise one's blood was burned and their hearts impaled with stakes? Louise Hay says in Heal Your Body, that the metaphysical meaning behind heart problems is long-standing emotional problems. The wise ones have carried emotional pain for eons from their many earthly lives. Talk about long-standing. Other reasons for heart problems, according to Louise, include lack of joy, hardening of the heart and belief in strain and stress. The wise ones whom I've met are intense individuals and hard-working teachers. They teach without ceasing often by giving brief but deeply philosophical advice to people. Yet the look in many wise ones' eyes reveals years of disappointment in their students. A wise one recently told me, if people would just take my advice, all of their problems would cease to be. I'm not being arrogant, I just know what would help them. Yet most people ignore the advice and keep wallowing in their troubles. Since the wise one's purpose is to teach and be the way showers, Perhaps this frustration with their mission is their greatest heartbreak. Most wise ones long for a magical and mystical soulmate marriage. They may feel the elusive presence of a kindred soul whom they've known for many lifetimes. This leads to a search for the beloved, and until he or she is found, the wise one may choose to be romantically alone. Or worse, the wise one may try settling for an unfulfilling relationship. In previous lives, wise ones may have taken vows of chastity or celibacy. These unbroken vows can follow someone into a current life and wreak havoc. Wise one Audrey is a perfect example. She knew she'd have past lives as a witch and also as a nun. As a witch, she was involved with pagan rituals, celebrating the earth, nature and the human body. This often involves ceremonies with nudity and sexuality. 
The reigning powers at the time deemed this material focus to be heretical and she was burned at the stake. In her next life, Audrey was a nun where she...